Welcome back to Sailing Moxie. I'm Matt. When I first bought Moxie and had her delivered to the new boatyard to begin the refit, she looked to be a pretty solid boat, and the pre-purchase survey confirmed this for the most part. However, the surveyor had marked several areas on the hull with chalk before transport where he had suspect soundings showing possible soft spots or delamination. At the new boatyard, further inspection confirmed that these areas needed to be addressed. For my own peace of mind, I wanted the hull to be solid, strong, and watertight before stepping aboard Moxie for the first time. In addition, the boat would need a new bottom painting with anti-fouling paint, so this was the perfect time to strip off the many years of paint buildup, address these problem areas, and start off my ownership of Moxie with a solid, good-looking hull I could be confident with. The workers set to work on the bottom soon after much of the rigging work and other tasks had begun to address these problem areas. The Hunter 54's hull is fiberglass and epoxy. Over the last 36 years, the water, salt, and sun have worn on these materials and the hull undergoes considerable stress while sailing. All of these factors lead to the degradation of the hull over time, as they would on any boat. Some fairly large areas of the hull were ground down and then new fiberglass and epoxy were laid in. The areas addressed were much larger than the problem areas identified in order to form a solid hull with the areas around them. In the process, one of the workers found an area of old fiberglass in the hull that was nearly bare fiberglass with little epoxy resin. It looked to be only one layer in one small section, but I'm glad we caught it before Moxie went back in the water. This could have been during initial manufacturing, or possibly in follow-on repairs, somewhere in Moxie's history. After several days of grinding, fiberglass layup, curing, fairing, and sanding, the work on the soft spots in the hull was complete. There were also a few cracks in the bottom fiberglass and paint on the keel, as you can see in these photos at this juncture in the keel's structure. This was not so much a structural issue as cosmetic and to increase the overall integrity of the hull and bottom paint. Once again, the old fiberglass was cut out in several areas beyond the damaged areas, the surface was prepared, and new fiberglass and epoxy were laid in. Fairing compound was applied to fill the voids and then sanded down to create a smooth surface that would be painted over with anti-fouling paint later on. As I mentioned in a previous video, there was a crack in the top of the rudder that was letting water in along the rudder shaft. This water intrusion caused severe damage near the bottom of the rudder that also needed to be ground out and repaired. A larger section was cut out, the area was sealed, and new fiberglass and epoxy were laid in. The top of the rudder was also repaired to prevent future damage. A few other small areas of the rudder surface were also repaired to increase the longevity of the rudder and to help keep it strong and streamlined. Above the deck, most of the lines for the running rigging have now been replaced with more appropriate lines for the deck hardware. In most cases, this was replacing 5 8 inch lines that were bunching in the clutches and sheaves with 9 16 or half inch lines where appropriate. Several blocks were pretty worn out and we replaced this hardware with brand new equipment. Here you can see all the new lines up near the mast. And here are the new lines further back for the main sheet and traveler. The last item I'll mention for progress in the last few weeks is the dinghy. When it was sitting in the stern dinghy locker at the boatyard, it looked to be a pretty sad sight. My father pulled it out with the help of a few other workers, hauled it back home in the bed of the truck, and set to inflate it and look for places that needed patching and repair. 
Even with the foot pump, it only took a few minutes to inflate. Once it was inflated, it was found to be airtight and it looked to be in relatively decent shape. The only real issue is that it needs to be re-glued back to the rigid hull and transom in a few places. This process involves a little sanding, some acetone to clean the surfaces, and G-Flex glue and pressure to bond it back together. Not a very expensive repair. Once again, lots of smaller tasks and projects leading toward major progress for Moxie. In the next few days, she'll be undergoing bottom prep and painting with the new coats of anti-fouling paint. To follow along with Moxie's progress, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you see all the new updates. It's only a few short weeks before she goes back into the water. Thanks for watching. For Sailing Moxie, I'm Matt, and we'll see you next time.